Hey everyone, Pastor Tommy McMurtry here from Liberty Baptist. Want to make a video right now. A lot of you might have seen some of the latest craziness from Pastor Wesley Tomlinson. Now, normally I wouldn't pay attention to stuff like this, but this is an exceptionally interesting thing for me just because of the fact that I thought that Wesley Tomlinson was a friend. And I will admit, I was completely deceived by this guy. And I am telling you, I have found out over the last several weeks that this man is crazy. And this is a really long story with a ton of details that I'm not really going to take the time to give right now. But I just want to say that I have come to realize that Wesley Tomlinson was never a friend. He has been an infiltrator from day one who has had one goal of getting in and causing trouble. And that's exactly what he has done. And I just want to show you, in case you're not familiar with who he is and just some of what he's all about. This was a pastor who was a friend of ours. He even spoke at, for, at Pastor Anderson's church at the post-trib conference. Pastor Anderson allowed him to speak behind his pulpit. He thought he was a friend, too. And so I want to show you um, some clips of him preaching at Pastor Anderson's just five months ago and some clips of him saying some very different things just this past Sunday. So watch this and be entertained. But a lot of the churches that are in this new independent fundamental Baptist movement, what they preach is exactly what uh, their leader does. Their leader, Stephen L. Anderson. I mean, whether they're preaching against a person, whether they're preaching against somebody like Sam Yip. And one thing I like about this prophecy conference, there ain't no preacher got up here and tried to sell a book. You know you go to one of the pre-trib conferences and you get up there and you let Sam Gipp get up there. The first 20 minutes he's selling his books. Whether they're preaching against somebody like Kent Hovind, whether they're preaching against somebody like Bill Grady or Born That Way Ministries. You let Bill Grady get up there in the first 20 minutes, you know what he's doing? He's selling his books. If, if Stephen Anderson preaches against them, all the other churches join in and they'll begin to preach. And so what you see there is you see a denomination with a leadership in Tiffany, Arizona, because when Stephen Anderson preaches it, all the other churches involved uh, begin to preach it also. Not only that, the doctrines come from headquarters. The doctrines of this new independent fundamental Baptist movement come from from Tempe, Arizona. The churches that follow Stephen L. Anderson, they follow his doctrines to the point of, of idolatry. And I, I'm telling you, if these, these people would just humble themselves, some of these preachers and teachers would humble themselves, and, and you know, they like to use study Bibles, and they like to use commentaries. Here would be my recommendation to them. Put your study Bible down. But, but if you want to listen to some commentary, what you need to do, you need to get on to YouTube and listen to some of these preachers that's been preaching the last couple days. Yeah. If you want, if you, listen, if you don't want to just read your Bible, just turn on YouTube and listen to some of these preachers that have been preaching on dispensation. Listen to some of these people that have been lit preaching on the seals of God. Listen to these preachers that have been preaching about the Antichrist and get in there and listen to them and see what they, they have to say. That they are absolutely crazy. They're damning people to hell. And you'll never understand the book of Revelation. The Bible says the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolish to say to him. So, so the first key to understanding the book of Revelation is that you be saved. And so why would you listen to Sam Gipp? Why would you listen to Sam Gipp? And Sam Gipp's not saved. And they get mad about that. They say, well, you damn him to hell. Absolutely not. Listen, he, he's, he's proven. He's proven that he's not saved. He's proven that he's not born again. Listen, he said clearly that Jesus is not my Messiah. He clearly said it, and he's clearly not saved. And so why in the world would you listen to, 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 to Sam Gipp? And even if he, if he was saved, he's a liar that has, has attacked people's character and has clearly lied about it. So why in the world would we dare listen to him? We need to... And he does this over and over. If you disagree with Stephen Anderson, you know what? You're lost. And they, they get all mixed up and stuff. And I asked this guy that, that attempts to teach on a pre-tribulation rapture, I said, who would you recommend? Who would you recommend as a pre-tribulationist that teaches right? Now, g g just guess who he said. Sam Gipp. He said Sam Gipp. 
Sam Gip. Listen, who is a liar? Who is a liar? Who is a liar but he that denies Jesus is a Christ? Who is the liar? You know that verse is proven true? Jesus is not my Messiah. You know that verse is proven true? You understand Sam Gip's a liar? You know Sam Gip is a bold-faced liar? I mean, he has told lies, and why has he not repented of it? Why has he not admitted to the lies? I can understand somebody standing against a man's position. I can understand somebody, listen, if you believe in a pre-tribulation or a fairy tale, if you believe it, okay, just go ahead and believe it. Quote your scriptures, do whatever you want to. But listen, when you start assassinating people's character and lying about them, listen, that's a big problem. And people, independent Baptists across this nation are still having him to come in their pulpit and he's still teaching the same false heresies and he's still telling the same lies. And I don't have to tell you what they are, you know. You know what they are and he's a liar. So who is he that's a liar but he that denies Jesus is a Christ? And you want to listen to Sam Gip? He's your main guy. He's the guy that you're going to run to for a pre-tribulational rapture. He's the one that you're going to going to trust in and, and understand he was, a, he was a disciple of Peter Ruckman. Yeah, that's right. And who is a nut but Peter Ruckman? <laughs> I mean, that guy is, that guy is he's, he's insane. He is crazy. That ain't, is, am I lying? You know that truth. Peter Ruckman is crazy. Most likely, and they, they, they'll hate this, Peter Ruckman is probably most likely in hell. He probably is. And if Sam Gipp don't get saved, he's going to end up there too. Because no doubt he is, he is a liar. And so we understand. And we understand. I've talked to many pastors. I've talked to many of Stephen Anderson's followers that have called me that actually want to move here. And you know what? I discourage them from moving here. I don't want them to move here. Why? Because they come into the church and they start trouble. They start trouble in all of the churches that they go to. I've talked to many pastors. Listen, I've talked to people and I've talked to preachers. And I, I've got people calling me and saying, listen, we're ready to move to your church church i mean i never thought i never seen anything like it they say uh, they, they, they're saying uh, all these independent fundamental church they use this word they say they're lame they're lame and so so you, you know what they're they're not reaching the world they're not reaching their community they're not they declared him to be infallible and so you say well he's doing a mighty work listen i i i can't say that he is i can't say that he is because there's a bible verse that he uses a lot if you look at it with me, look at Luke chapter number 6. Luke chapter number 6, in verse number 43. Luke chapter number 6, in verse number 43. The Bible says in Luke chapter 6, in verse number 43. The Bible says, For a good tree bringeth not forth corrupt fruit. But notice the second part. Neither doth a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. And so the Bible tells me there that a corrupt tree, that's Stephen Anderson. Stephen Anderson is a corrupt tree, and a corrupt tree cannot bring forth good fruit. The doors, and so, so this is the crowd here. This is the crowd that is going to reach Arizona. This is the crowd that's going to reach the, 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 the Navajos. This is the crowd that's going to reach them. And I tell you this, if this crowd don't do it, nobody else is. Yeah. Nobody else is. And I thank God for a church like this that is a lighthouse that, that, is a, that is an example to churches across the world. The, and churches are getting on board, and there's a lot. Li now notice, all that was only four months ago. You want to talk about a major flip-flop there. Now, I just want to say, though, that nothing happened that made him change his mind. There is no doubt in my mind that he was against us from the beginning. Pastor Tomlinson, he was one of the first people to subscribe to my channel real early on. His channel then was called Wesley AV1611, and he got on board real quick. You might remember when Pastor Anderson made a video several months ago talking about great churches standing with us, and he mentioned several churches. And Pastor Tomlinson got on there, left a comment saying, we support you too. He reached out to Pastor Anderson. He was pretending like he was on our side, but the thing is, what proved that he was never on our side to me, and I never even realized this till a few weeks ago, I thought when he started attacking people and uh, try, you know, picking on people on our side, 
that maybe weren't exactly like Pastor Anderson, and this guy's attacking him, I thought, well, you know, maybe he's just overly zealous or whatever. But I then, I finally, one day, it all clicked with me that a lot of these fake accounts that I had seen out there that were stirring up trouble, they were all sounding a lot alike, especially the Andersonite account. Y'all might remember when I talked about the Andersonite account, he was the one that revealed who the watchdog was to me. And it's funny too, Pastor Tomlinson, he is accused, he's told other people that I am Andersonite. I had no idea who Andersonite was, but I will say my first guess when Andersonite first surfaced was Wesley Tomlinson. And I called him up and I asked him, are you Andersonite? And he said no, and he convinced me that he wasn't. But then, anyway, after time goes on, we ended up, uh, you know, several things happened. There was a lot of communication going on. And uh, Andersonite was the one that told me that, um, you know, he was investigating the watchdog, telling me all this stuff. And then Tomlinson later called me and showed me who the watchdog was. And he said he found out through Andersonite. And then after it all went down, Andersonite said that he had known for weeks who the watchdog was. Well, later, Pastor Tomlinson told someone else that he was the one who revealed the watchdog. He was the one who found him, and he had known for weeks before I exposed him, told the exact same story. Now, I don't know which one's true, unless maybe both of them are the same. And that was one of the things that kind of gave it away. But the thing that convinced me, though, that Tomlinson was never a friend is there were other accounts that he was using, communicating with us, communicating through my wife on Twitter, an uh, account that had a real name on it, but not a real picture. And so real to us, I mean, we sent these people a Christmas card, but it got sent back because the address was no good. He had been pretending to be these people for months which told me from the be that proved that he was an infiltrator from the beginning. And many of these accounts, the Bob uh, Bob L account on Twitter that was going around trashing Pastor Boyle, pretending to be from his church, that we knew from the beginning that was the Andersonite account. I've been wanting to expose that for a long time, but I didn't want to reveal certain things I knew about Andersonite. And I still hadn't connected it with Tomlinson until I realized that one fake account was his and he's the only one who's ever said he knows these people personally i've talked to other people that communicated with them they've only communicated with them through things like twitter they don't they've you know they don't know for sure they're a real person he's the only one that's ever claimed they're a real person and we got him on record doing that on youtube last night through some comments he admitted some things we've got screenshots of these things he's deleted some of the comments that he made on there they're incriminating most of them are still there but either way this guy is crazy and he's been using so many aliases and things he's got his stories all mixed up and it ended up getting him busted okay but proof for all of you that he's two-faced is just the video that you just watched he didn't change his mind he's been pretending from the beginning he has been setting out to cause trouble and it is amazing the lengths that he went to. And he was very convincing. And, you know, the Bible warned about, you know, infiltrators coming in and people trying to trying to cause trouble and things like that. And that is going on with our movement. We're seeing a lot of the pastors in our movement just getting piled on right now by just piles of garbage that are out there. And I'm going to show you just a few more clips and just some of the crazy accusations because he, he starts saying some accusations in this clip, too, that these things come from known enemies of these pastors. And so, you know, these are things that are clearly twisted out of context. Some of the stuff that he says he's about, something he mentions that's about Pastor Major, he's going off what the watchdog was saying, the watchdog interpretation of this. He, know, he knows watchdogs bad, but listen to some of these clips, and I'll, I'll say a few things about them. That is almost quoted there, and in one preacher even preached a message, why I'm an Andersonite. Why I'm an Andersonite. You, let, me, let me tell you something. When you take the name of a man like that, outside of the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, now we all know who that was. That was Pastor Perry who preached the message, why I'm an Andersonite. And anybody who watched that message, right in the beginning of the message, they would see how he mentioned, you know, the watchdogs and the sluters, you know, they're going to have a heyday with this. 
but he was making it very clear that it wasn't so much that he called himself that. This is something that people are calling us. Just kind of like the Christians, they were called Christians first at Antioch. It's something that people called them. And it was just his way of saying, you know what, fine, I'll embrace the term because you know what? I'm not ashamed of what it stands for. He agrees with where Pastor Anderson stands, his positions. And so, yeah, fine, go ahead, call me Anderson. I, you know what, I'll say the same thing too. You know, if you want to call me an Andersonite because I believe, you know, in the post-trib rapture and I'm against Zionism and dispensationalism or I teach the reprobate doctrine that for some reason people have attached that to him and that did not start with Pastor Anderson. I heard that my whole life. But uh, it was very clear what Brother Perry was talking about in that message. But he's had the punk Kyles and people out there like that bashing him for it. Tomlinson's been cheering that guy on, even though he's a known heretic too. And it just, whoever's against Pastor Anderson right now, he's for. Whether it be a rucktard, whether it be a modalist, it doesn't matter. And if you go on Pastor Tomlinson's channel, he had several videos where clips where he'd say stuff against Sam Gipp. He had several against Peter Ruckman. Those are all gone. Part of that might be too because he's been, you know, filtering information to Sluter, trying to use Sluter uh, to go after Pastor Anderson. Just anybody that's against Pastor Anderson, he's on his side right now, trying to stir up trouble. And just an interesting thing about Andersonite, after he, I exposed the watchdog the way I did, Andersonite was very mad because Andersonite had told me a bunch of horrible stuff about the watchdog, but didn't provide any proof for it. And I think he thought I was going to go and I was going to expose those things. I was going to say all these horrible things about him with no proof. And then it was going to make me look bad. I think he could have been working with him trying to set me up, but I didn't take the bait. And Anderson and I also, Anderson and I, Wesley Tomlinson and this other fake account that he used, they were all telling me for a long time and trying to make me think that Spencer Smith was the watchdog. But I never bought into it. I kept telling him, if you guys think he's watchdog, give me the proof and I'll expose him. But until then, I'm not going to out him. I don't think it's him. And you guys haven't given me any proof. And finally, there was a couple other people too. They tried to get me to expose his watchdog, but they never gave me any proof. And it wasn't until they gave me the proof that I actually did expose him. And even then, I didn't give his name out because I felt like I was being set up. And it turns out I was. But it is, it's amazing all the bad guys that he's been working with. But watching, that, so, you know, what he's saying about Brother Perry there, completely false, completely taken out of context, and he knows that. And watch this one too. The old IFB, the old independent fundamental Baptist. But let me tell you something. They have no interest in getting along with anybody. They have no interest in anybody but their own denom denomination. And oftentimes, the okay. So if we're the ones that are just trying to make this a denomination, how come, and hundreds of people saw this in the group on Facebook, why were you the one going after Pastor Doka? Why were you the one spreading rumors about him with no proof once again? Supposedly you had called his pastor, been emailing his pastor. I mean, pretty obsessive, pretty weird. And you decided that he wasn't exactly like Pastor Anderson, and so you tried to get everybody to not have anything to do with him. Who's trying to make this a denomination? And that's one of the reasons Pastor Anderson ended up throwing you under the bus because of the fact that you were attacking other people. You were attacking people for not being exactly like us. Not Pastor Anderson. He's not the one that did that. Wesley Tomlinson was the one that did that. And many people saw him do that when it came to Pastor Doka, and that was that was one of the that was probably the first red flag for me when it came to him, the first big one where I'm like something's up here. But watch this one too. The Trinity is a great mystery, but even this fundamental doctrine is being attacked out of Tempe, Arizona by Stephen L. Anderson as he's coming up with his own doctrine. And what's amazing about this is this new independent fundamental Baptist movement with Stephen Anderson in his uh, select churches that follow after him. Not only is Stephen L. Anderson changing, but the churches involved with him are changing. Why? Because they get their doctrine from headquarters. 
They get their doctrines from, from Tempe, Arizona. They get their doctrines from Stephen L. Anderson. And I've seen churches, even one, I think of one in particular, a man got up and he preached and he actually said that Stephen Anderson called me on the phone and told me that he had my back and that, 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 that Stephen Anderson coached him on the doctrine of the Trinity and he actually preached a message and he said this, I was wrong. Okay, interesting one there. So Pastor Anderson is the one attacking the fundamental doctrine of the Trinity. He's been the one trying to stand up for it. And he's talking about him changing his doctrine here. We're talking about Brother Perry once again where he had said he was wrong. But here's the thing. Nobody has changed their position on the Trinity. Some have updated how they explain the Trinity. Okay, when you're trying to explain the Godhead, that is a difficult thing. And there are some things that since this doctrine is being attacked, that we have come to realize that you know we need to explain better. That in defending the deity of Christ, we have used some bad terminology and stuff like that, and so we need to watch out for that. You know, we we do need to go ahead and say persons. That is biblical and it doesn't take away from the deity of Christ. And nobody's changed their fundamental doctrine of the Trinity. Some have just tried to improve how they teach it, improve how they communicate it. There's a lot of illustrations. Pastor Perry, I just listened to a message you just preached where he said he gave the illustration of us having a body, soul, and spirit. And he made this comment that was very true. He said, you know, no illustration's perfect. Okay? They all end up breaking down somewhere. And you know, where any of most of us pastors, if we disagree at all, it maybe would be on how we communicate or how we explain the doctrine of the Trinity, because it's hard to illustrate something like God with earthly things. But you, none of the pastors in this movement, whether it be Pastor Anderson, Pastor Perry, Pastor Roger Jimenez, none of them deny the Trinity. None of them are teaching oneness. They reject it. And they can clearly show where they're different from those things. Where Tyler Baker, all he can do is just say, I'm not oneness. But then he explains his doctrine, it's exactly like oneness. And so, you know, that, once again, just a joke, Pastor Anderson has been sticking up for the fundamental doctrine of the Trinity, the orthodox view of the Trinity, fighting against this brand new doctrine of the Trinity that is only taught in Pentecostal churches. So once again, you know, major lying right there, major misrepresentation. He's hearing this from the punk Kyles and the people out there that are making videos attacking these pastors, and he's just believing anything anyone says that's against Pastor Anderson. He was bashing Pastor Anderson, saying people aren't saved. Well, why is he doing that? Because Sluter's been making videos against Pastor Anderson about that. And so now, a known heretic, a known liar, a known deceiver is now truthful because he's against Pastor Anderson in Wesley Tomlinson's world. This, my friends, is just is plum loco. So watch this clip here too. Stephen Anderson, I, one preacher stands up and says that Stephen Anderson is going to be judging old fundamental Baptist preachers in the millennial. I mean, what kind of stuff is this? These people are, let me tell you something, these people... Okay, now all that was, I was there when Pastor Major preached that message. He was just making an illustration about how those old, many of those Old Testament laws are going to be put back into effect in the Millennial Kingdom. And he wasn't saying Pastor Anderson is going to be in charge of all the Baptist pastors. But he was just basically just saying that, you know, these laws that uh, many Baptist pastors are afraid to preach about, that they act like they're terrible, you know, God's going to have Pastor Anderson telling those guys to do it and telling those guys to get it done. He wasn't stating that as a fact, making an illustration, kind of kind of being funny, but at the same time, serious about the fact that those Old Testament laws are going to go into effect. And God is going to use us to rule and reign. And do you really think that God is going to put those who have rejected the least commandments of God? Or is he going to do like he said, and those who obeyed the least commandments, and taught others the least commandments, they're going to be greatest. I do think he's going to be above a lot of these pastors, especially the ones who are afraid to teach 
the whole counsel of God. But how it's all going to work out, nobody knows. But he was making a point, an illustration there. But this is just, you know, once again, just crazy railing. And this is another thing, too, that he heard from Watchdog. Watchdog probably used that clip three or four times. And so I think I have one more here. Let's let's see. Okay, that was the last that was the last one I had. But yeah, just craziness. Unstable. A double-minded man is unstable in all ways and the man is unstable. The man is crazy. I don't know if he knows who he is. He's been operating under so many aliases that I don't think he knows who he is all the time. And just kind of an interesting thing, if you go and you watch that video, uh, the, la the latest video I had about the new IFB denomination, watch at the very end of that video. I thought I had it on here. The way he kind of, after he gets done with his rant, he kind of motions the camera. You know, you can shut it off now. And I don't know about this, but have you ever noticed it's dead silent in the auditorium? I'm starting to wonder if this guy is just the janitor of the church that just pretends to be pastor and just makes clips. It's kind of weird. I've only ever seen one video where I could ever even hear anybody. Uh, he might got one of his janitor buddies to come in there, but I'm telling you, something's weird with this guy. Has anybody even visited his church? I'm not saying he doesn't have one, but you know, it's just interesting. All he's he's only posted entire sermons a couple times. It's usually just clips that were him saying things that would he knew would please our crowd trying to get in good why so he could stir up trouble and that's what he's been doing he's led an assault on pastor doka got shut down real fast he led a big assault on pastor boyle he was pretty creative with that one with some of those fake accounts um they trick some people all right that bob l on twitter that was andersonite which is either Tomlinson or someone closely associated with him, deceived a lot of people. Okay, And you need to understand, people, once again, I've been talking about following anonymous accounts and listening to what they say. you got to watch out for that foolishness. And just because they have a real name on it doesn't mean it's a real account all of a sudden. You know, you start looking, you, know, you can't find anything about these people, okay? They're fake, trying to deceive and I am convinced that many of the attacks that are coming our way right now, these are coordinated attacks, not by man, but by the devil, because of the fact that he is terrified at some of these events we have coming up, the Soul Winning Mega Marathon, the Soul Winning Conference coming up. It has got the devil's attention. And Tomlinson is either in, I mean, a close associate of the devil or he is just an idiot that has been completely duped. And even if he is an innocent, dumb idiot, okay, you know, he needs to be held accountable for his actions, okay? And all he's going to do with this, he's just going to say, liar, liar. He could easily prove this stuff's false if he wanted to, but he doesn't. He never does. He just says liar, and he always repeats it three times. He just kind of acts like Ernest T. Bass. So he reminds me of the way he just runs around, lies, lies, lies. He's, he's nuts. The man is crazy, and proof of that is just those clips. That was only four months ago. People are trying to use stuff about Pastor Anderson where he just taught something differently, you know, eight or nine years ago. This is massively different four months ago. But the truth is, he hasn't changed. He's just been caught. Now we're seeing the real Wesley Tomlinson. What we saw in November at the post-trib conference was an act. And proof of that, that he did not change his mind, he's always been an infiltrator, are the fake accounts he was using with me, with my wife, even before the post-trib conference. And I will say, I thought he was my friend. He was very convincing, and it wasn't until it, a few weeks ago when I made the connection with one of those fake accounts when I realized he's been against us from the beginning, trying to cause trouble from the beginning. He tried to set me up with the watchdog. I don't know. He might be friends with him. I really don't know. I do know, though, now you see watchdog, you know, uh, doing positive comments on Tomlinson's thing because it's like Tomlinson's page right now 
It's where all the guys who've got their behinds kicked by Pastor Anderson are all going together for group therapy. And they're all coming together to try to take him down. You know, it's like the whole Arkham Asylum has gotten loose and are all going after Batman right now. I hate to use a carnal uh, illustration like that, but that's what it reminds me of. And I think this guy does need to be locked up in an asylum. He's crazy. I would love to talk to somebody who's actually visited his church to see if it's even real. If anybody's even there. Because something is cuckoo with Pastor Wesley Tomlinson. And so let this be a lesson to everybody. Watch out who you listen to. Okay, Many people just listen to those that they want to hear. But you know what? Nobody wants to look like an idiot. Nobody wants to be led astray by a liar. And so you got to watch out for those. There's those who there's a market right now for Pastor Anderson haters. And there's a few people out there that have figured out and they're trying to tap into that market so they could actually get a following because they never could on their own. We've got them in the Rucktard world. You got Tyler Baker who's going to try to start a whole church uh, full of these people. And now you got guys like Tomlinson going to try to get his own little following of those who have been disgruntled by Pastor Anderson. So anyway, I wanted to just kind of share some of this craziness with you. Uh, There's a ton of details I could give to prove more of this stuff, but I I don't want to bore everybody with all the details. We've got screenshots of things. I mean, there has been so much stuff over the last several months, and I wanted to reveal it a long time ago, but last night I pretty much got all the evidence I needed when he got backed into a corner on YouTube and started going into full troll mode. If you saw Pastor DeLello's video about trolls and how they act, he explained Tomlinson to the T, especially when we started confronting him about some things. The way he acted, it was priceless. It was exactly what Pastor DeLello was talking about. This man is a troll. One who went to great efforts to cause trouble. And the only thing he did is helped us take out some of the trash. And so, anyway, God bless you. And I hope you found this um, enlightening and entertaining.